Hi, my name is John. This week I'm going to be installing the R8 spindle on my TIG that will work with Tormac tooling system or TTS tool holders. Welcome to another episode. The moment has finally arrived where I can install the R8 spindle on my TIG, uh, building what I call the TIG mock, because it has the Tormac tooling system that I'll be able to use for holding things like the Hymer, Edge Finder, not really Edge Finder, 3D sensor, and other tools with specific offsets. And I call it the TEG mock because it's kind of like a blend between a TEG and a TOR mock. This is actually going to be three episodes altogether for setting it up. This episode, which is installing the spindle, Another episode which will be installing the power draw bar and a final episode that will be covering the motor speed control for the Conso 500, uh, I think it is, watt motor that I'm using, which is equivalent to about three quarters of a horsepower. Anyway, let's head to the workshop and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this all off to make it easier to put the, the new spindle on. And I'm going to start by taking the motor off. Um, so. With any luck, this will be the last time that I use these pulleys, which will be just wonderful. And next, I'm going to take uh, this off, the spindle, so I should not need that anymore. Uh, I'm going to then take this off because this is where the new spindle is going to go. Oh, did not see that coming. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Okay, so I don't, I believe I don't need that anymore. I don't need the shim anymore, at least uh, I might not. I might still need a shim, but I'll find out when I put the new spindle on there. I'm going to install this motor mount adapter. Before installing it, I wanted to make sure I had these screws in there. These screws are a little bit tight on some of them because this is first generation and the tolerances were a little bit too tight. They were probably perfect before anodizing, but anodizing average it adds a layer that's on average about two thousandths of an inch thick. So I have some screws that go in here the other way. And I'll just go ahead and install those. Now one thing I just remembered is I want to put some Loctite on these so I'm going to go get the Loctite and uh, come back. All right, I'm back with some Loctite. I actually had to go to the store to buy some Loctite, but now at least I can... Uh, I'll just put a little bit on, and I'll go ahead and put in the next screw. I'll take this one out and put Loctite on it because I didn't earlier. All right, so I've got this reading about 25 over here. So I'm now going to move Z up and down and see how it does. Okay, it's perfect. I don't have to do any aligning, so I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these screws and then make sure everything is okay after tightening the screws. I've pushed all the, the four bolts out so that I can put some Loctite on before I put the spindle on. Got some Loctite blue here. Put some on each of the threads. And then, making sure that I put it on correctly, pull it on the top, 
the uh, R8 connection on the bottom. Okay, so I have that in there now. I have the collet, the R8 collet, and I put some anti-seize down here on this face and up here on this face, not needed on this face. So now I'll go ahead and uh, put the collet up there and then just screw this in. So first I, I'll take uh, an R8 and Okay, I think I may have tightened it too much. Okay, let's put this in there. All right, that should be good. Just hand tightened is all I need for the tramming. For tramming, you know, I can just rotate it like this, but to be more precise, there are set screws on either side of the screws holding this on, here as well as down here. So what that means is I can tighten those, and then I can move them back and forth for micro adjustments of the tramming, which would make it easy for me to get this tram just right. So right now they're pretty far off. I'll go ahead and tighten these set screws to the point where they're actually contacting the screw uh, because I left them pretty loose. Okay, so now they're touching the screw. I'm gonna tighten this one and then there's one down here. What I'll do just to make it easy is I'll make it so that these two screws on the bottom are pretty much tight against the screw and looking at them they're sticking out about the same amount whereas up here they're not so what i'm thinking is that i can loosen this one and tighten this and then as i do that as you can see they're coming closer together so that's pretty darn cool that's a whole lot easier way of tramming than i've done before okay so let me uh bring these Oops. Ha! Of course, it, it helps to actually have them touching correctly. Okay, so I've got this one on zero, exactly. And let me see, I'll loosen this and then see which way that goes. Okay, that actually looks like it's the correct direction. So I'll bring this one back to zero and actually it needs to, the difference increased. So let's see, I want to get these so that they're about the same, they look like they're about the same now. Okay, this is back on zero, that's almost on zero. So those are getting awfully close. Okay, that's zero. It's a little bit below zero. It's definitely a lot easier. And I can get it really close. So that means I'm you know, within well less than a thousandth across. In fact, I'm close to, at this point, I'd say it's within uh, a couple tenths at the most. So now I can go ahead and tighten these screws. So that's still zero. That's slightly above zero. Let's see if there's enough uh, in here so I can move that. Okay, I went the other way. And yes, I can still move it. So that is awfully cool. Left one is zero, right one is basically zero. 
zero, zero. That is so nice. You'll notice that I don't have the set screws on this side, and I don't have them on this side because this is where the motor mount is going to go. This is the motor, this is the motor mount here. These are the two screws that will hold the post in that holds up the motor itself. The mount goes into two T-slots. As you can see, I've already put the T-nuts on, and that makes it a little bit easier to get it into the first slot here. I just need to loosen it a little bit, like so. And it helps to have the T-nut in the correct orientation. And now it just goes down like that. So I'm not sure yet where I'm going to need this to be, but I'll just tighten it on here. And then the next step is to mount the motor. I made uh, my own custom motor mount. I probably didn't need to, but I did. So this installs with two screws right here. And I probably should uh, use uh, Loctite on these as well, but I'm going to do that later once I, I'm sure everything is where I want it to be. The motor mounts up here with two screws. And then I can uh, attach the pulley and move this up and down so that this is aligned correctly. Right now it looks like it's a, a tad low. Uh, but not very much. Okay. I think I'm going to move it up just a tad. I'm using uh, this to see how it is. And it looks like uh, it could go up just a little bit more, so I'm going to move it up. Okay, I think I may have moved it up too high. Okay, that looks pretty good. So. There it is, it's installed. The, I, mean, I have a power draw bar. I'm going to leave that off at the moment. And the next thing I'm going to do is, is set up the controller so that I can actually run it and see how it works. If you're curious to learn more about the R8 spindle and the power draw bar, I have a link below to the group on Facebook, which is a, a TAG mill and lathe owners group that has a lot more information about this as well as the frame that I installed. And I'll also have links to other episodes down below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give me a thumbs down. But please, in the comments below, say why you didn't like it. I'll see you next time.